a 1MZ FE V6, the 24 valve, 2 cam, or 4 cam, 24 valve, 200 horsepower, roughly V6. This is a 94 Camry, the first year I think introduced with this V6. We're going to change the motor mounts today. Uh, there's a couple of YouTube videos out there showing you all kind of hard ways to do it. Pain in the asses, uh, shit taking off, all kinds of stuff being taken off. Um, and uh, we're going to do it the easiest way we think possible. Uh, so there's four motor mounts. Uh, first is the, the dog bone. Uh, they call it a dog bone, which is the strut strut bar or whatever they call this uh, motor mount. We're going to take that off. Uh, the first thing you want to do is jack the damn car up. And when you jack the car up, please, fellas, please, do not make some of the other YouTube video mistakes I've seen uh, by jacking the car up right here on the bottom of the goddamn car where somebody who owned this car before did and bent it all up with a floor jack. Don't do that. Jack it up on the frame. Solid metal frame right there, please. Um, and go ahead and put your jack stands in the front. They deem to be the safest point. See how they're kind of lodged in there? That way you don't kill yourself. Uh, Cause you're gonna be banging and pushing on shit, especially for this back motor mount here. Let's see if you can get the camera in here real good. See that? that motor mount right here there's the bolt for it right there this is a this is the power steering pump right here in a way but right there is a motor mount now there's another video was the guy's taking his whole assembly out he's pulling all this shit off he's pulling he's pulling the steering knuckle off he's pulling uh he's pulling the uh, tie rod in loose he's pulling all this shit loose uh we're gonna try to do it without doing any of that uh most people, I don't know if you paid attention, but this bracket right here that holds this motor mount, that, that attaches this motor mount to the frame, actually unbolts from the under, underside with four bolts. So the bracket to frame can actually be removed. We're going to try it that way. We're going to try to jack the engine up out of the place. So first thing we're going to do is get all the other motor mounts loose where the engine is just sitting on the motor mount so we can jack the engine up and get that side up. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this dog bone, 14 millimeter bolts. Basic shit. We're gonna get those out, get them out of the way. This dog bone obviously is gonna present itself to be a problem to stop the engine from being picked up. So anything that would stop the engine from being picked up, and the least amount of shit you have to remove, the better. Now I know Toyota makes everything to where you have to remove everything just to get the one thing. Like for instance, try changing, changing your spark plugs on the back cylinders underneath the intake. That's a different day, different video. Get your dog bone loose. Probably can't get that bolt out until you remove the other side. Okay. You get the concept. You can remove this water tank real quick. Don't just start pulling shit all off your vehicle if you don't have to. Because that's just stuff you have to put back, make an extra work for yourself. Now, in some cases, it's necessary. But in this case, we're going to try to do it with removing the least amount of parts as possible. And we're going to do it American style. We're going to not do it European or some Russian or some foreign country. This is America. There's obviously some pressure on this mount. Because the back mount is destroyed. The bottom mount. And by the way, guys, and girls, whoever's working on the damn car, you gotta understand that the number one reason for failure of the motor mounts, which these engines are notorious for, is seal and oil leaks. 
we didn't film it, but last week we pulled all this apart, changed the timing belt, and we pulled the cam gears off, and we replaced the seals behind the cam gears. They're notorious for leaking. So is the crankshaft seal. So we replaced all three seals on that. And while we were in there, we replaced the water pump. So see now this bolt became free because I removed that. This one's slightly shorter, put him back here. Slightly longer, put him up here. Just remove your mount. In this case, this mount was fairly new. We thought we could get by by just replacing this. We were wrong. But it's still good, it's still new. Pay attention to how it comes out. Slightly pitch it that way, but if you have uh, any kind of mechanical ability, you can figure this shit out on your own without remembering. All right, next up is this front mount down here. Check out the front mount. Don't confuse it with the shock absorber on the front of the engine. That shock absorber is on the right side, I think, and the motor mount is on the left side. So one of them is a shock absorber. That's not what we're replacing today. That's a different, this is a shock absorber. This is the motor mount. Looks like I'm going to need a little bit more extension here. Uh, let's see. Here we go. 3 8 rod extension. Okay. Now if you got dainty little hands and you don't have much power in your forearm. <clears throat> There you go. Then put a cheetah pipe on the bar. Don't be afraid of that. Nobody's going to make fun of you because you're going to be doing this at home. Nobody's going to know. I just don't need it yet. Not to say later I won't. Okay, so I'm removing the top main bolt for this, which is 17 mil. In this way, the engine should sit down okay. But if I need to pick it up, I can pick it up. There's nothing stopping me from picking the engine up out of the car. Buy the old oil pan pickup very carefully by placing a 2x4 or a 2x6 on a jack to distribute the weight on the oil pan evenly so you don't put a dent in the bottom of it. Your car winds up holding 4 quarts instead of 5 when you're finished. Okay. I don't want to have to fast forward this video, so uh, why don't we just cut until we get to the next phase. Yeah, so we just removed the dust cover right here, which goes here. Okay, just two bolts, 12 millimeter, I yeah. believe it, 10 mil, 10 mil yeah. all right, whatever, 10 millimeter right here and here. Okay, removes the dust cover. Tranny mount, okay, here's the transmission mount. They give you, in the four mount kit, they give you a tranny mount, okay. We're going to leave this alone for now. We're going to leave it bolted up. There's two bolts here, two bolts here. That's the engine side. And then under here, there are two plugs. You pull these plastic plugs out under the frame, and you got two bolts under there. From the looks of them, they look like 14s. Uh, the majority of this car is 10, 12, 14, and 17, okay? Just to let you guys know. And there's some 8 millimeters inside the transmission pan, but I doubt any of you guys are going to be messing with that. Uh, okay. So, we're going to leave this for now, and I want to note that one of the biggest reasons why they have a mount failure on these cars is because these engines are notorious for running high miles. I mean, this is voted Toyota, one of Toyota's most uh, longest lasting engines. This one's got 250,000 miles on it, okay? I don't know how it was maintained because I don't know the previous owner, but from the looks of it, everything on the car is denso which means it was genuine Japan made uh, which is excellent um, so it looks like it was serviced and maintained pretty well the tranny fluid was kind of dark which indicates somewhere but anyway the number one reason for failure for motor mount on this car is because of oil seepage the head gasket I mean the valve cover gaskets leak the seals like I said leak we replaced them the, the crankshaft, I mean uh, camshaft seals and the crankshaft seals leak like a sieve. 
slinging oil all over the belts. This car was drenched in oil. We pressure washed all the oil. Well, there's still some up there, but we pressure washed all the oil and threw some new some new belts on it. Uh, underneath the car, you can see this rear mount, the little donut style mount. It's actually pressed in the block. I mean in a part of the engine block. Now you can buy the whole assembly like you've seen on other YouTube videos or you can try to have it pressed out by a mechanic or you could do what I'm fixing to do and remove the mount, gain access through this little bitty hole here, this little bitty space if you can see. It's a round donut style mount. I'll show you the mount later before I put it in and the one I take out. Then we're going to try to remove it without removing any of this shit right here. Sorry, power steering re return line and all. We're going to try to leave intact and we're going to try to beat it up. Now, note the reason of failure for this bushings are is because oil eats rubber. Do not spray squeaky bushings with oil. Okay, for the last time we've changed the lower control arms on this car and everything because of that reason. Because oil ate the rubber. Okay? As these bushings are made for oil, place, places for oil like uh, energy suspension or something, I haven't seen any offered for this car. Uh, it made out of polyurethane or polystyrene or whatever they made out of. Rubber gets eaten by what you call it by by regular fluids. So if you look underneath the car here, let me see the camera. Bring it around here. Okay, go up. There's some there's some knockouts right here. Right here, there's a knockout. Right here, up here, there's a there's a bolt somewhere right there. There, here, here, and somewhere under here. And that removes that bracket, that C bracket that holds in that donut up top. So we're going to try to lift the engine. We're going to remove these brackets and see if we can beat that, that piece out. Since it's been soaked in oil for years, it should be nice and free. All right. All right. Here's that complicated rear mount, okay? Here's the bracket that bolts to the frame, okay? Now there's also a bracket right here that bolts to the engine. It's got a couple of bolts. Now this also serves as a bearing housing for your CV shaft that goes through and through and into the tranny, okay? So other guys are removing this and they're removing this whole piece, okay? And there's a snap ring back here and they want to remove that and all that stuff. But we're going to try it a different way. We're going to try to jack the engine up by the oil pan here. We're going to try to get this bracket above this certain point. We're going to remove the bolt, uh, the, the bolt pin that goes through the mount itself, which is right here in the front. We'll do it from the front side when we cock the wheel. And then the back side, I think, it has a welded nut on the rear. Let's see. Uh, no, it looks like we're going to have to stick a wrench on it, possibly. I'll let you guys know. No, it might be welded. I feel like a weld. Um, so it might not might not have to be held back on with a wrench. But anyway, here are your four bolts for the mount. One, two. You're going to need a deep socket. It looks like a deep 14, which I probably cracked already. Shit. Oh, I'll use a half-inch drive. Deep 14. Got another one right here, which is going to need a swivel. To get past the exhaust and then you got one here so remove this this little doodad here you don't need to put the shit back in I mean there's no purpose for it yeah there it is in there okay so one two three four remove that pop it up see if you can jimmy it out after the engines up once that's out of the way or you can just clear the bushing we can beat that bushing out this way until it falls out take the new one and beat it in um, I know it takes an engine press, um, I mean a, a shop press to get that in and all that shit, but we beat out much worse without damaging anything. So there are innovative ways to get that out, um, such as knocking the rubber out or cutting a part of the bushing or cutting a part of the sleeve and then picking a screwdriver and picking a certain of it up and letting it overlap and then kicking it out. So there's certain ways we can, we can maybe finesse it out, but we're going to try it and see what happens. If it turns out to be a failure and we couldn't do it, none of y'all can do it. And I say that with some confidence. And we've never done this before, so 
It's not like we pre-made this video and all this shit and we went through and do what other people do just to look like they know what the hell they're doing. We don't actually, we've never actually done this. We've watched other videos and other people do it. And we've done shit that was harder. So we'll see. All right, so we got a 17, 17 half inch socket on a made in USA Craftsman before they switched over to China. And we're gonna take this mount bolt out the center, the center pin bolt that holds this donut, this donut mount. I call it a donut. We got the engine jacked up partially. Looks like the bolt's coming out fairly easy. That's probably years of oil sitting on it. As you can see the mount bolt is out. The engine's jacked up almost to its max, but not quite. And here's the bolt that come out of it. Nice long bolt that went in there that way. Now we're gonna remove these four bolts for the bottom mount here. Let's see if we can take this joker off in reverse the way everybody else has been doing it. Well, it makes sense to put the socket on the right way here. All right. Let's see if I can even loosen it with this. Oh, wow. All right. Cheap Chinese right here, huh? Not even moving. Not that one. We gotta get that one out. There we go. That one's good. Hey, is that thing loose at all? Uh, yeah, it's actually kind of moving. I'll be damned. Okay. Well, let's get these two off with a swivel. Yeah. Let's get after it. All right. All right. Shine a light in here. All right. Here's the mount. We took it out. We had to cock it back. Push it out. Jimmy it this way, push the exhaust pipe over to the side since it's flexible right here. And we pulled it out sideways like this, and this is the way it actually goes back in up top. So now the mount is free from the bracket. Now we're going to lower the engine and expose the donut so we can beat it out from this angle and let it fall in to the cross member and between the cross member, and we'll put the new one in the same way we beat the old one out. Okay, so there's access to the mount. There's the donut mount right there. Now, please note the the oval location and the hollow spot, which looks like it's down at the bottom of the mount. We resorted to a sawzall blade. We're going to cut. We could have probably beat it out with a pipe and some, you know, heavy force, but some American force. But what we decided to do, oh, forgot to mention too, there's a mount, not a mount, I'm sorry, a heat shield that's ridiculous that bolts on the top of the mount and stops the heat from the exhaust manifold from destroying the bushing that just sits there with two 10 millimeter bolts and they unscrew by hand you can get your hand in it pretty easy if you lower or raise the engine depending on how big your hand is now what we're going to do is we're going to cut into the sleeve with a sawzall blade metal cutting blade cut into the rubber at the bottom which is where the hollow is and we're going to cut into it and we're going to cut into the steel a little bit then we're going to take a, a long sc shank screwdriver we're going to stick it in there and we're going to bend the sleeve to relieve pressure of the diameter of the sleeve so we can beat it out easy so we're cutting a relief All right. took about two minutes uh, if you can look in there zoom in there better than that Come on, bro, this is a professional camera. Okay, see that notch we cut there? As we hit the, the mount bracket a little bit, no big deal. That won't hurt a damn thing. And we got a long shank screwdriver right there. See that? We, we cut that as a relief. Now what we're going to do is wedge that screwdriver right there and right there. And we're going to try to bend one end up like a C to relieve pressure all the way around. It only took us about two minutes to cut into this with a sawzall blade. It's not terribly hardened steel, so... Don't get carried away with your blade and watch your line. Don't cut your brake lines. Okay, uh, let's see here. Got a good groove here. Okay. As you can see, we got the screwdriver in there wedged between the right place. Now, 
we can keep hitting or we can pry down but I'm going to keep hitting until I bend this into a C shape I'm relieving pressure on this bushing eliminating the need to bring it to an automotive shop or a machine shop and have a press be used okay now this is some shade tree stuff but this is effective all right courtesy of MG Didier American World War II veteran and America tools made in America when they still were made in America everything's outsourced to China unfortunately this is an American screwdriver to do an American job on a foreign car now as you can see <clears throat> if you look in there good zoom in cameraman you see this here nice gap I put in both sides of the bushing <clears throat> what I did was put a relief I cut a relief where one piece of sleeve would over lap the other piece of sleeve. See that? Alright, everybody can see that now. I'm going to take my big pipe and I'm going to put it right on between these two, right here and here, and I'm going to whack the shit out of it. Where are we at? We're about on the, uh, put the light on. You're on the sleeve? We're on the bushing? On the bottom of it, yeah. Okay. Really I'm not on the housing, are we? Nope. Okay, you don't want to hit the housing. You want to stay on that crease that you created. All right, let's do this. I'll cut the video for now. All right, folks. Looks like we beat it out with our trusty maul. Um, you can see here's my new mount, right? You can see that relief is to the bottom. Of course, this is probably a genuine part. I mean, I don't see Toyota written on it, but or Denso, but. Uh, you can see that it's, wait, there's a part number here. Yeah, I see it. Fine print. It's just to get me started, so I can get a straight start when I go to put the bushing in. Please don't pay no attention to the grinder. It was here when I moved in. It's probably still made in America even though it's a piece of shit. Which gives, I keep giving hints throughout the video. Please stop outsourcing American tools to a fucking country that, that has almost zero quality control. If the tool's not made in Japan, Germany, or America. I don't fucking want it. It's junk to me. I'm talking about Ryobi. DeWalt. Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And every other tool company, every other tool that there is. Even Craftsman. It's now outsourced to China, Black & Decker. Oh, they all say made in the USA, but when you read the fine print it says assembled in the USA. That doesn't need made. Further? Go ahead. Stop. Hold tight there. Let's yeah, I'll take the light. Let's check this two by. If we have to go get a one by, we will. Let's see if I can get this, push this tranny, this um, power steering line down a little bit here. It's only a, a return line, it's not high pressure. Let's see here. Okay, well, we'll try that. Now, it seems like the 2 by will give us the cushion we need to get the bushing started without fucking, without messing it up. Alright, so we beat our mount in. We took a little break first, beat our mount in, and we're going to put the bracket back on. I got the light. You work the camera. Alright. I love working on stuff at night. I wish we wouldn't took such a long break. Let's see. It goes like that. Uh, let's 
let's see where the short bolts go to the front. I can't remember. Uh, oh yeah. Remember they got a welded nut on the back side of it? Yeah, the welded nut goes to the driver's side. Alright, no problem. Get it in there. Pass the stupid CD shaft. I've seen another dude struggling a lot longer just trying to get that big bracket out of there. Know what I think? What? engine is jacked up high enough. Whoa, wire. That was the problem. Back in, huh? Alright. Now, let's just the bracket around straight. Find the holes. Put your right here. Our ugly mount went into place. Now we gotta do. Give me that rag. There you go. Where are the nuts for this thing? The one right there. Set me up the, the little cheap road impact with a what you call it on it. What we got here? 14. Okay. Ryobi Impact ain't doing the job. And we'll go with Craftsman Burger Bar. Sorry. Ratchet. Ciao. Alright, front gay ass mount to this Toyota. Okay. Old mount came out. It's all floppy. Everybody else test. This one has a dust boot that goes over it. The other dust boots all rotten. <sighs> all right, so I had to to move. That's these a two, power steering filter, I think. Yeah, the two 10 millimeters and the power steering filter, just to get to this, to get this out. I couldn't wedge it between the exhaust manifold and this stupid filter, so I just had to move that. I got it. So these three blades go in like that front ways. So just so you know. Alright, note to self, or well, note to viewers, this piece right here, make sure, you can do it how you want, but I, from experience just now, underestimating this little simple mount, uh, make sure you get this dial pin right here in the upper part of the motor itself, the, the motor mount bracket on the motor, and put your 17 millimeter bolt down in and get that dial pin lined up to the back first and then tighten down on that and then worry about Jimmy and these after you've already lowered the engine some to the point where you can get the bolts in but definitely tighten that joker first that way you get it lined up and that's the new mount it's in it's lined up and it's set down right now okay so just to let you guys know that it's easier to line that up first and then now we're going to go for the wishbone doggy bone put that underneath all this shit so we got the jack under the tranny pan now flat board same as the oil pan the other three mounts are replaced now we're going for the fourth mount the tranny mount uh, you can see I picked it up a little bit the tranny mount separated you see the gap there there's a gap on that side it's kind of cracked uh, yeah I'd say that the tranny mount's kind of a little bit toasted as far as rocking back and forth goes. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's going. Uh, but I, I, I suspect that it was going to do that. We'll see if it sits up higher after. We're going to jack the engine up after we loosen the bolts. Alright, let's get, uh, looks like 14, two 14s, 
the full 14s, and then, the 14s and then and then we got these two on the bottom here. We got to pop these plugs out right here. These little bullshit plugs. We can go back later and put these things on if we need them. Keep the water out of the frame. All right. All right. So here's in comparison to the new versus the old mount. Watch out for the obvious signs, which is the offset. Don't be a doy and put it on wrong. See the offset? The mount goes on like this. See? Offset. Offset bolts in the frame. This is the old mount. Slap, slaps in like that. Holes in the frame. Then bolts to there. Okay? Now, same mount. Uh, this transmission mount's actually the easiest freaking mount on the whole car. It's easier than the wishbone. The dog bone. Sorry. So far, unless it, unless it starts being a dig. Yeah. Alright. Here we go. Go up to the engine. Uh -huh. Get some pre-made hole started up here mm. well we can obviously see that this bracket isn't exactly the same as the other one China thanks China all right cough China cough uh, and this one <coughs> seems to be a little bit of a wannabe cross threading bitch No, I'm not going to let that happen. So, we're going to stick our screwdriver in there. And we're going to pry it up against it like that, man. As long as you can get about two to three threads started, your nose you ain't cross-threading it. Okay? Alright, that's on. Okay, make sure we're not cross-threading. Now we got our other two bolts where they fly. I got. There's one back here in the back. All right, that one's starting easy. I say easy. These aftermarket mounts, they uh, actually don't fit. Don't they? They all fit pretty good. The front mount. The very front mount was pretty difficult, surprisingly difficult. I thought it would be the easiest one, but it wasn't. It was uh, second in the hard, the hardest mount scale. Uh, let's see if we can bind this little piece of shit right over Yeah. All right. Bond action going there. Let's do this fuck. Watch your hand. Boom. Please don't trust your vehicle tightness to uh, a piece of shit Chinese tool like this. Always make sure you take an American ratchet and make sure it's tight enough. Alright, the proper torque spec according to the 1980s Hanes Reebok wearing dumbass back cover piece of crap book says the torque on this is about two wrist clicks. No, no, depends on what kind of wrist you got. If you, if you got a limp wrist, <clears throat> that's probably about 15. And you'd need a breaker bar about four foot longer than this one. But if you're a man of even, equal testosterone, about one wrist click, 
I think that's satisfactory to Haynes. Shit, anything's satisfactory to Haynes. They tell you to ohm out shit you can't even ohm. I love their definition of how to test a coil pack. Ohm out a coil pack and see if it's between point something and point something. You ohm the piece of shit out and it is. Or how about cooling temperature sensors? That's my favorite. None of them from your local auto parts store ever work properly. Drop the engine, the transmission. All right. Take the bolts that they gave you, because you know they're probably a different thread. Put them on the end of your handy job. Oh no, they're not even American size, I mean, standard size. These are 14 factory. I think I'm just gonna use what Toyota had on here, and see if it fits. China versus Japan, what do you expect? Well, I don't know why they would give me an American size. Well, I don't feel a cross thread, do you? Don't nope. look like. Nope, so. Pitch the uh, bolts that came with the kit and use your original nuts, I mean. All right. Yeah, no, like you get 10 your, different sizes. Get your breaker bar. I'm sorry, your extra long American ratchet. Where the hell is it? Did somebody steal it already? All right. Floated away to China for a second. Chinese, China's trying to take it. See, I need a rebuild kit for this thing. I'm not going to turn it into Craftsman because all I got to do is take my American steel ratchet and give me a different type. I'll keep my 80s ratchet. This, I'm sure this is a common question. What is that bolt right there in the middle? Where? See that bolt in the center? This? Yes. Uh. That's probably something you just take off when you want to pull the damn engine out. Probably. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know actually what the hell it is. That's part of the mount. See, there's one on here on the factory mount. Think that's an adjusting screw or adjusting bolt? I don't know. That's a good point. It could be. Or you could have had another rubber grommet between here and here, and it might keep your transmission and everything more stable. I, I don't know. I know that this is making the engine sit up higher because look at that squatty dotty. And look at that dude. The rubber's all stiff. Well, yeah, I mean, it's going to squat over time, especially since these are A1 or A1A, whatever. Cheap mounts that I bought. I mean, I think they're cheap. They're the same thickness of steel. looks like quarter inch. I mean, I've seen motor mounts horrible, um, especially from AutoZone. <laughs> Just some shit, man. So... You know what, let's keep these, these. All right, well, here we are. We've changed this shit. Uh, I don't know what brand we use. Some Japanese, Chinese. Tenacity. Tenacity. Okay, so we use Tenacity for about 60, $65. We replaced all the mounts on a 94 Toyota Camry with a V6. Uh, the XLE version, the extra luxury model. For those being specific, the A541E transmission. Yeah, A541E, which there are currently not many breakdowns on YouTube, which kind of pisses me off. Uh, but anyway, it took us about, about two and a half hours with no breaks it would have taken us to do all those mounts. And uh, that's uh, doing it the the funny way I haven't seen anybody else do without a machine press for that rear passenger side uh, mount. And uh, we'll test the car later. And if we're still getting a clunking noise, then I guess we're going to go ahead with uh, struts because that's uh, all that's left. And uh, if we get a clunking noise after that, well, then we'll make a video going into the transaxle on the passenger side. I'm going to assume that uh, that's, that's probably one of the biggest problems. Toyota Genuine Parts. That will be changed with Toyota brand parts. The transaxle bearing assembly. I believe it's the bearing and... And the housing assembly 
Yeah, it's housing. Housing and barren assembly on the A541E? Yeah. 541E. A541E, yes. Yeah. To yeah. accommodate for the new 1MZ FE transmission. Right. I mean, engine, sorry. <laughs> Right, and so uh, we'll post this video, and uh, don't bother leaving any comments uh, for all you dicks out there. Uh, you know, basically, you can just eat it, you know, go ahead and eat one, because um, we're not leaving the comment section open. Um, the only thing you can do is thumb the video down, and I uh, actually don't give a shit. So, uh, that's the inside look on changing your mounts. Have a nice day, fellas.